Based on the functioning and the level of engagement of HRM, we can identify four types of the platform forms or gig economy forms. Information providers, matchmakers, administrators and intermediary platform forms. Information providers, for example, they give online job boards. So, LinkedIn is a very good example uh, and this falls in the social media, there are other examples also in the social media, which provide basically the platform to give information. So, they are information providers. In these kind of firms, HRM responsibility is very low. So, for example, Twitter, so could Twitter is also an information provider, but they have less of HRM responsibility towards their end users they have major responsibility in terms of the validity of the content or the suitability of the content. So, for that they can have policies, otherwise there are not much HR related responsibility of these uh, uh, firms uh, for the service providers as well as for the content generators. HRM activities are designed to be imp uh, or implemented by inventory generally is related to the recruitment process. So, they recruit uh, people, they help in recruitment that is it. Then there are examples of matchmakers. Matchmakers, the uh, Bharat Matrimony is, an, is one example of the matchmaker. Headhunters, the organizations which help companies to identify suitable talent like Noki.com or Monster.com etcetera, there the role of HRM becomes little more engaged, little more intense, because they need to do the uh, background check, they need to know the uh, validity of the information posted, they need to know more details of the requester as, as well as service provider or they need to have the information checked of the even the consumers. In this uh, in these kind of firms, recruitment and selection, these two activities become more important. Administrators are like they work as temporary agencies. So, they do not engage with the customer in the full employment kind of mode, but their service, but their, uh, but their services are more, are of more engaged nature. One example is of the no broker dot com. This no broker dot com, this company provides a platform to connect the uh, home sellers and prospective buyers. They also connect uh, home owners and prospective tenants. They not only connect, because that connection or matchmaking is done by the search firms as well, but they are called administrators, they can be called or they should be called administrator because they not only connect, they also uh, employ field officers, who actively engage with the customers, those who have to purchase home or sell home. They look for the inspection of the property, they ensure that all legal provisions are met when the uh, uh, deal is completed. So, this kind of uh, uh, economy, this kind of firm requires more active HR. So, here that recruitment and selection and appraisal compensation also are important part of HR activities in the administrators organization. Then comes the intermediary platform firms. Intermediary platform firms are like online labor platform firms, platform cooperatives. Uh, the level of HRM responsibility is much higher in these firms. So, example like Zomato or Uber or Urban Cap, these are the examples of intermediary platform firms, because large number of service providers, large number of independent professionals are associated with them and large number of customers take important services from these, custom, uh, from these requesters or these professionals. 
these professionals are supposed to behave in certain way, they need to maintain certain level of professionalism to ensure that these firms have to actively engage in not only recruitment and selection, but also job design, workforce planning, performance appraisal and training and development as well. So, depending on the engagement, the intensity of the engagement of the firm, we can get different types of the gig economy firms and in the different types of the gig economy firms, role of HRM happens to be of different nature. Complexity is immense in this environment, because here it is not a typical triad actor, which is which works in the formal uh, firms with respect to HR practices. The what is the formal triad actor? The formal triad are the HR managers, line managers and the employees. They all have a clear cut contract about their relationship and about their exchanges. In the gig economy form, though contract is there, but there is lot of flexibility in that contract itself. So, this typical triad does not operate in the gig economy form. So, pay administration is there in the gig economy forms, but fee is not paid by the, uh, by the company, it is uh, paid automatically uh, or it is paid by the uh, person who gets the service from this, uh, from the associates performance management is also there. Many of you, most of you rather would have given the rating to the driver after taking the ride from Ola or Uber, but that and these kind of ratings contribute to the performance management of the service provider, of the requester. In this case, it is the driver who is the requester, but that performance management and that performance data is given by the end user and not by the uh, supervisor or not by the organization. Organization at best compile this data and based on this compilation, it can reward or punish the requester. Thirdly, coordination and control work involved in the gig economy generates lots of data. For example, the Uber driver can be tracked wherever the person is, if the person is driving or not driving, sitting idle, all that behavior can be tracked. Similarly, for the Zomato, we can know which is the restaurant about, uh, which is the restaurant which supplies best Chola Bhatura in particular community or what is the particular dish which is very, very uh, popular, which is the most popular of a particular restaurant or in which area, what kind of products are in demand. So, all these information is are available to the gig economy firm and that is the result of their immense coordination and control process and this information provides lot of power to these companies. They can influence the behavior of the requesters remotely. And as a result of this complexity, we come across certain cases. So, there is a famous case of the London Central and Employment Tribunal, judge actually held the claimant that they are the worker and entitled to be paid annual leave, sick pay, maximum 48 hour working week, uh, national minimum wage and protection of the whistling blowing legislation to whom? To the drivers of the Uber. The claimant sought compensation for failure to pay the minimum wage and failure to provide paid leave. So, two claimant complained of the detrimental treatment on the whistle blowing ground and the decision of the case came in favor of the claimant that they should be treated uh, on, on many aspect, about many aspect as equal to as the workers. Uh, second case is uh, again of the UK, if is between the uh, Pimlico Plumbers Limited and uh, Appealant. In this case as well, Supreme Court rejected the appeal by uh, Pimlico Plumbers to the finding that Mr. Smith, who is the appealant by virtue of extensive control over his performance and requirement for him 
to provide services in person had the status of worker un under several pieces of legislation and not as self employed. So, gig economy firm with the help of technology with the innovative business model they generated certain special kind of the arrangement and interaction, but uh, these interaction and engagement in these two cases were compared as a full time worker kind of association. So, this case is uh, by a claimant versus uh, uh, delivery, this is a another uh, platform firm uh, which is uh, uh, which provides the uh, delivery services. So, the Spanish court ruled that uh, delivery rider is an employee rather than self employed contractor. As rider in the question was a delivery employee, the court found that his dismissal from the company was inappropriate and ordered him to be either rehired or compensate. So, you can see that technically we can say that gig economy firms are not hiring people, but they have so much control on these associates that in these three cases the claimants or the requesters were considered on par with the full time worker of the organization. And as a result of that they were found to be liable to get the facilities or compensation similar to not exactly, but very comparable to a full time worker. 